Hello, I am Allegra Madsen, the program director at Frameline, and welcome to Frameline 45. We are super excited to share with you our Frameline Talks panel, Two Spirits, Indigenous Voices. Uh, today, I am joined by Landa Lakes, friend of Frameline, uh, who will be leading the conversation. Chukma, Sohochipoa, Miko Thomas, Kostinichi Landa Lakes. I am currently on Ohlone land. Uh, that's where I, I live and work. Um, it's important to um, mention the land and place where you're from and to acknowledge the uh, traditional caretakers. So I'm doing that now. Um, now, usually um, among indigenous people, we, we have this thing where we like to introduce ourselves so that people know who we are and where we come from. Um, as a Chickasaw person, I've, I've already introduced myself. Um, I'm Inti Tupelo. I'm from, um, from Tupelo, um, Chickasaw, Saya, I am Chickasaw, and now I'm going to pass it on um, to our, our panelists so that they can introduce themselves and, and where they're coming from. Hello, my name is Sharente. Uh, I am 20 years old and a citizen of the Narragansett Indian tribe, uh, the indigenous people of Rhode Island, and I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yate she'e Sean Snyder, yin she. Hello, everybody. My name is Sean Snyder. I am an enrolled member of the Diné Nation. Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Stevens. I am Ute Shoshone Bannock in San Carlos Apache, and I am glad to be here. Uh, real quickly, we just want to also acknowledge the land that we are on today. We currently live in Mesquite, Nevada, and that is Old Paiute land, and they are a sister tribe to my San Car or excuse me, to my Ute tribe, and also a relative tribe to the Navajo tribe. So thank you. All right, so let's just get right right into our panel discussion. You know, one one of the main things that we're talking about is two spirits. So one of the first questions that I have for for everybody is. Um, when did you first learn the phrase two spirit? Because you know it's it's very easy for us to to repeat the phraseology that we often hear um, when we describe two spirit people. You know, it's the same thing. Everybody says the same thing. So I I want you to just to share when you first learned it and um, what it meant for you. Sharanti. Yes. Yeah, so I I talk about when I came out that um, it was such a beautiful experience because uh, as much as I was revealing something to my family, my family was really uh, bringing that back to me. And um, my grandmother uh, talking to me about Two-Spirit people and um, how affirming that was. Um, after being so afraid and feeling so alone for so long, um, to have my family tell me that this is who we are as indigenous people, that this is um, good and sacred, uh, it was a very, very beautiful uh, experience and memory that I, I hold with me to this day. Um, and so I, I'm ever thankful for my grandmother for throughout my journey as a two-spirit person, um, trying to navigate powwows with other tribal communities and a lot of the adversity that comes with that. My grandmother was always there taking me to these powwows um, and staying by my side to defend me. Um, should anyone try and come at me with, uh, you know, some colonial notion of uh, me not being right or okay? Um, so that was my first experience was actually when I came out as a young teenager. Wow, Sharente, that's, that is beautiful. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I can honestly say that I share that that knowledge in coming into Two Spirit in a very similar way. Uh, for me, Two Spirit is a relatively new term within the last 15 years coming back into light, coming back into the, the community 
and especially it being the first of June, Pride Month, you know, this year I feel like is an astounding year to really educate our fellow community members of what the term Two-Spirit is. And when I came into it, I had to have been in my early teens, about 13, 14. And, um, you know, it was similar. It was a, a family affair where we had a ceremony going on. It happened to be um, a funeral and we were putting one of our grandmothers away. And in my Ute culture, I was, I was raised on the Uena and Ore Indian Reservation in uh, Northeastern Utah amongst my mom's people. And my mom's people I, is a matriarchal society. And with that, we follow our women. And so women are always giving us direction. They're giving us um, knowledge. They're giving us uh, rituals. And in a lot of our rituals, when it comes time to putting an elder away or putting somebody away from our community, um, the women are the ones to, to take care of that. And just to share a little bit of information on that, that's when I came into my two-spiritness. My family, the women in my family acknowledged who I was. And, I, and at the time, I was a teenager. I didn't fully understand who I was. I was still discovering my identity. And they, they brought comfort to me in saying, come with us. Come to the back room where we were getting ready to dress and wrap our, our grandmother. And that's when I really came into my own of being um, accepted, being acknowledged. And it didn't even have to come through words. It was saying, we know who you are. You're coming back here with us and you're helping us with this. Because our women have always said, oh, that's a place for the our women or that's a place for our man. But what's beautiful about our two-spirit people within our community is it's so fluid. And when you kind of get that um, almost that nod of your, your two-spirit and you will flow fluidly within our community, whether it's a masculine role, whether it's a feminine role. And that's who you are and that's what you've been gifted with. And so use that wisely, use it generously, but also protect it and keep it sacred and keep your message sacred. And that's really, I'm thankful for my relatives that have embraced my two-spiritedness, have nurtured my two-spiritedness, and really helped me to, you know, formulate a way of bringing it into our contemporary atmospheres and environments. So that's for me. That's that's a little history on on my two spirit and coming into it and acknowledging it. Hi, everybody. Again, Sean. And for me, coming into my own two spiritness was it was a very it was a learning about the term and learning about my community at, as a young teen. Um, I, I moved a lot and growing up, I never had like a solid community of people that peers that I feel like I looked to and looked up to. And finding this community at, as a young teen was me coming into my own identity, um, finding that gender non-conforming, finding myself as non-binary and discovering that about myself and you know, letting my family know at, at an early age, and then thus my community, um, which became Powell community a lot. I, I traveled a lot and I danced a lot. So it gave me a lot of opportunity to connect with a lot of people about me and how I represented myself. And for me, one of my greatest, you know, coming into myself moments was dancing in a switch dance special when I was uh, like 14, 15. And my mom and sisters got me dressed up in all of my sister's beadwork and, I, you know, fancy shawl outfit. And um, I got to dance a contest out there with uh, everyone dressed, um, you know, and feeling their best. And I was feeling my best. And that was that moment for me that empowered me, like my own family, my own sisters dressed me that way and pushed me out there to really do what do what they I've always taught them to do. That was something that I carried in within my family was just that tradition and um, ide ideology of dancing and what it means to us. And I was always teaching my sisters and showing them moves and <laughs> you know, dancing with them in that style. And I never had a chance as a young queer kid to, to express myself in that way. And so that moment, um, it really changed me and led me to doing that as much as I could throughout the years. Thank you, Sean. You know, one of the things that I would, I would, I would like to also point out is that a lot of times when you have the switch dance, a lot of people aren't out there doing um, doing a refined dance. Oftentimes, it's um, the, 
the, the clownier you are, um, the more likely you're going to um, you're you're going to win the contest. But before we go on, um, just because they, there's probably a lot of non-native people that are watching this, um, would somebody like to explain exactly what the switch dance is? Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because uh, I share the experience of. Uh, going out as a young teenager, switch dancing in my mother's old fancy shawl regalia. And um, I had conversations where I was speaking just to that point of like, that this is not enough for me, that I want to, to do this seriously. This is the way that I am... Uh, giving my prayer. This is my Thanksgiving. Um, and if I am not being true to this, then um, I am not dancing for the right reasons. And um, so the switch dance is a dance where uh, the men dance in traditionally women's styles and the women dance in traditionally men's styles. And like you said, it oftentimes becomes this very big comedic over the top sort of thing. And um, that was not the space where I could truly express myself um, as a two spirit person and as a dancer. Um, I have so many memories growing up as a young boy, um, feeling totally alien from the other um, boys in my category um, and wanting so badly to dance with my sister. There's actually home videos of me in Grand Entry sneaking up to where my sister is um, with all the other girls so I can dance with them. Um, and it's it's been a wild journey from there. Yeah, I think I think Sharent is right with two-spiritness and and entering switch dances and not being felt like you're taken serious for taking on, you know, that women's regalia. Um, I was raised to always, you respect that style of dance. That style of dance means something. Um, so when you wear that regalia, whether it's a men's outfit or it's a women's outfit, you respect that origin of the dance. And I think now coming into more um, understanding spaces with, with powwow, we've now evolved into there being public acknowledgement that, hey, this is a switch dance and there's also clown dances that happen. And clown dances happen when you're being funny and you're taking something and it's always good as, as indigenous, as native people, we always say, you can't be too serious. You have to have a little humor because sometimes when you're too serious, that's when things fumble and you're supposed to be able to have that humility and laugh at yourself. So that's when clown dances are fun. That's when you can make an outfit and resemble something because it's all in humor. That's that's the, the drive home point. But with switch dance in the last few years, um, we've definitely seen it come into where announcers or families that are sponsoring or power committees that are putting on the switch dance make a point now in the last few years to say there's clown dances and there's switch dances. So if you're gonna put that outfit on, it's now coming into the discussion of take it seriously, don't play with it, don't mess with something. And so that's, that's my little take on, on switch dance and and differentiate the differences between switch dance and clown dance. All right. Do you have anything to add, Sean, or or can we no, just all of that? that <laughs> all right. That that was great. It's 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 a great point. Um, you know, one of my favorite um, sort of like clown dances, of course, is the duct tape special, um, <laughs> and 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 that that is the perfect opportunity for for somebody to come out and you know make fun of like. The jingle dress and everything else. Um, it's it's it, it, it's it's a fun moment, um, but I, I just I, I just have always had my issue with with um, unfortunately with the switch dance because um, it it is the opportunity for many young people who are dealing with um, 
gender identity to have the opportunity to come out and dance in the style that they want. And, and it's a shame that people oftentimes don't let them. So let's talk about that next. Um, you know, we've, we've created the Two-Spirit Pow Wow here in San Francisco, and, and, and it's a rather large powwow. But one of the things that it focused on most importantly was to be welcome and to be welcoming. So now we're going to go into a difficult situation or a difficult discussion. Um, have you ever been somewhere where you felt unwanted? Yeah, I, th I think we can talk about that. Yeah, I think our, our biggest experience was um, a bit more recent in our history and, um, you know, goes back about five years ago when we first went, went out to try the Sweetheart Dance um, as Sean and Adrian, a two-spirit couple. We went and signed up for, um, you know, this special and went and danced out there as a same-sex couple amongst all these um, cis couples. And it was a really powerful and important moment for us um, that wasn't so well received. Um, the power committee ended up disqualifying us and not telling us um, but until like a press release after the powwow. And um, to find out in such a public way that we were just taken out of the mix because, because of how we were, you know, together and, you know, showing up in that way really offended them. And it was um, a chance for us to just be out there with all of these other couples and represent us, uh, you know, love and um, showing them what could be possible. Yeah, um, I share a similar experience. Um, as a teenager, I was um, about 16. Um, 15 or 16, and I decided that I wanted to fancy shawl dance. Um, I, that was all I wanted to do. It was all I had wanted to do my whole time growing up. And after coming out as two spirit um, to my family and then to my greater tribal community, um, it was something that I was ready to do. And I remember one day before school, when I first revealed it to my mother, my mother responded by saying, no, I'm sorry, honey, but I don't think you can do that. Um, because she knew there would be such um, vitriol thrown my way. Um, and, and a lot of people would be resentful of it. Uh, my parents and my grandmother uh, talked to me about, you know, people that they had seen in the past um, that were two-spirit that tried to dance in a different style and then being thrown um, out of the uh, dance circle. And I decided to do it anyways. And for that whole year, I practiced fancy shawl dancing and um, eventually my mother made me a regalia that she gave to me for Christmas um, as her way of, of showing that she was behind me and whatever I did. And uh, very similarly, uh, you know, they talk about when people are oppressed, when it goes out of fashion to oppress them one way, they find a new way to do it. Um, and so at that point in time, it would be very blatant and ugly and obvious for them to stop everything and try and kick me out of the circle. And so what they did was they waited right before my competition and, uh, they sent people to talk to my parents and told them, uh, that I would not be allowed to compete. Um, I decided then to take off my number and to go in and dance anyways. Um, and that kind of sparked something that continued through the whole summer where behind my back, uh, powwow committees were telling judges 
um, not to judge me, which upset a lot of the judges because they felt like knowing my situation, they should be able to decide for themselves um, what they should do. And um, eventually people got so fed up with it that the judges walked off and uh, it was followed by a huge protest of people from all over um, my family, other families, uh, even uh, different drum groups came up and supported me and threw money at my feet and uh, my other sisters that were dancing with me in my category came because they weren't even for this. It was a small group of people that were against me and I had been so invisible for so long and finally people were able to see what was happening. Um, and it was just tremendous. And I ended up um, placing fourth and then I placed third and then I placed second and then I placed first. Um, and then I was asked to be a head dancer at um, Dartmouth's Pow Wow. And um, it was such a beautiful, journey and um, so much change was made here in uh, Southern New England. And uh, that uh, shortly afterwards, I then saw on social media, the sweetheart couple and saw that things like this were happening other places too. Um, but uh, with the pandemic, I've been so thankful for this time. Um, this documentary is being released called Being Thunder that kind of chronicles that whole period from 15 um, up until I graduated and that whole dance journey. Um, but even today, one thing that I have been, uh, I've been afraid of during this pandemic and why I've kind of been grateful for this reprieve um, is I know that if I, whenever I go back out into the powwow realm, there's going to be a lot of hate following behind me still. Um, people yelling slurs at me out of cars, even young children, uh, coming up to me and saying nasty things that they've heard from their parents. And I know they've heard it from their parents because their parents will loud mouth it in front of them talking about me. Um, and it's something that, you know, puts a pit in my stomach, but it's so important during that first whole summer where I was just at my lowest and I felt like, is it even worth it to keep dancing? Um, it was the person now and then that would come up to me and say, I had a loved one who was two spirit that wasn't able to do this, that walked this path before you or young people coming up to me and saying, I mean, I have so many two spirit cousins that, danced as children that no longer dance because they didn't feel comfortable to go out at our powwow or at other tribes powwows. Um, and because of that, it's almost as if these tribal communities are, are then keeping those two spirits children from this whole sector of indigenous life and it's not just powwows, but also our traditional ceremonies um, and feeling ostracized from your community. It's it's an ongoing thing. I, I know I've gone on and on, but um, it, I feel so blessed that I had a family that accepted me unconditionally and also a family that was respected in our tribal community so that people couldn't try and say, oh, well, you know, he just wasn't raised right, that he doesn't know because um, 
because they they knew me they knew my family before that and um i think a lot of people have shifted and have seen that you know our our way is love I, I agree with you, Sharente. And I just want to say real quickly, I'm thankful for for you and sharing your experiences and your stories um, from, from how you've grown and how you found your strength. And it, it's tough. Um, I want I want our two-spirit youth, our indigenous queer youth to know that, you know, these these issues are tough to talk about. Um, we still deal with them currently, but I also want you to encourage you and also see the pride and the joy in in these stories, in the development and representation of the two spirit community because it, it can get tough. But you know, we are your community. We're here. Um, that's why we're having these discussions so that you can find a community that's out there. It may not be where you live. Um, it may not be at your local power, but we're out there. And through the work that Sharente is doing, the work that Landa Lakes is doing, it's it's phenomenal. And that's where the positivity is. And that's where it feels good to be home. And it feels good to be with your family and talk about these things. Because being able to share these experiences of oppression within um, powwows and being two-spirit, is what's gonna change the narrative and is what ultimately gonna change how people feel from having um, negative feelings to positive feelings. And I just want everybody to know that you are loved and you have a community and you have family out there that supports you. And um, I, myself, Adrian, will support you in all that you do. One of the things that I, I, would, I would also like to say um, for, for those who, who are viewing is that a lot of times, unbeknownst to many people, uh, two-spirit people have been very active within their community before ever sort of coming out as, as two-spirit. They've, they've often been very active. I know that I represented my tribe many, many times in, in, in my younger days. Um, and, and the transition, though, into, into the modern world is, is something somewhat different. I think that some people have an idyllic view of Native Americans in the United States. They often think of Native Americans as being very accepting of their two-spirit people without also realizing that um, colonialism and, and Christianization has really changed the atmosphere with, within Native traditions. And, and that's something else that, that, that we can sort of talk about too. We can talk about a little bit about how, how our own tribes view um, two-spirit people or the traditional form of two-spirit. For us, it's um, hata keklana. That's, that's our word for it. Um, before two-spirit ever existed, that's the word that we use is hata keklana. Um, and so um, may, maybe we can talk about that. What, what sort of traditions does your tribe have? Oh, we don't have very much time left. So maybe we can make this very quick. <laughs> is, is, is there a traditional name for it? And, and is there, there a, a, a a piece or a, um, how should I say this, a, a custom associated with it. Sean? For, uh, for our Navajo people, our Diné people, we have a term called Natlin, which is a third gender in our traditional concepts. And it's a, for us, it's a, fem a female or male with female characteristics or sometimes a female presenting male. Mm -hmm. And so to take that idea, that learning about that as a teen real quick, it really helped reinforce how I feel as a two-spirit person and finding that broader community is having those traditional concepts within my own culture and having a language to it really helped me identify with it and helped my family understand me better. Yeah, um, in our community, I well, I think, uh, a lot of times uh, I, I've heard from people that, you know, two spirits are just something that was out West. We didn't have two spirit people here. Um, and it's like, what are you talking about? Of course we had two spirit people in the Eastern woodlands. Um, and, you know, a lot of times because we had such early contact 
uh, going back over 300 years. And a lot of the first people that settled here were these Puritans that wanted nothing to do with our ceremonies, let alone to talk about our two-spirit people. Um, it's like you you can't find anything on two-spirit people um, from a definitive source as if our oral history isn't enough. Um, but I mean, uh, Baron de la Hanton talks about uh, the hunting women that don't take husbands that go out with the men um, in the Eastern Woodlands area and talks about the hermaphrodites of the village. Um, in my own culture uh, with the Narragansett people, um, I would refer to myself as no washpa, which means he who is effeminate. Um, but I think uh, more generally than that, I would talk about myself just as a person that is not shall we, so, uh, an in-between person. Um, so uh, I, I share a, a lot of the sentiment as far as with ceremonies, that being a huge part of my acceptance and feeling accepted when the women do their whaling ceremony that I was welcomed in to be a part of that and um, how it's so fluid and around the house, my mother might call me her son, but then we'll go somewhere and she'll call me her daughter and we'll call me she. And um, I think that's part of it. Earlier we talked about, you know, uh, clown dancers and our two spirit people remind us all that this separation between us all is just an illusion that we are all relations and we are all connected. And it's our two spirits job to remind us of that circle with no beginning and no end. Um, and they do that by making us, us feel again. I mean, I feel like colonialism, the reason why we have all of this homophobia and transphobia in our communities is because of trauma and the trauma of colonialism that get people to be caught in this programmatic way of thinking of ideals and um, these strict rules and binaries of what should be and what is the right way instead of just feeling and seeing and understanding and knowing the person that's right before you. Um, and seeing them as you see yourself and respecting them as you respect yourself. Um, so th that's all. I'm sorry I, I take no, up so much you. time. No, thank you. That was that was beautifully said and beautifully put. Um, un unfortunately, we've we've sort of run out of time, but I want to I, I, I want to do one thing before we do. Um, I'll start with um, Sean Adrian. Um, your 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 documentary. Um, the, the sweetheart dancers if people could take away one thing from that documentary what would it be oh to keep dancing keep being yourself and stay true thank you and and the same for you Sharente. can you tell us the one takeaway you would want them to take away from your documentary i think young people across the world for all time have been born into a world set with rules and structures that are not of their own making. And so it is their job as young people and it's that journey that we all go through to find their place within that, to dismantle it, to make a mess of things. Um, and eventually, wherever you go on your path, um, I think eventually you'll realize, as I did, that what you're doing is nothing new, but that it's taking us back to our origins of who you've always been, who we've always been as people. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Frameline45 for um, letting us have this space, Allegra for introducing us. Um, thank you, Sean, Adrian, and Sharente. Um, beautiful, beautiful words were spoken today. And one of the things I want to remind 
re remind us just as just as um, indigenous people is is that we truly are all related we we are all connected in in some way and i do expect to see you out and about um somewhere in the native community it's it's one of the beautiful things about belonging to the native community is we always come across each other no matter no no matter how distant we are whether you're on the east coast you're in oklahoma or you're in california we will eventually come together again and i look forward to seeing you there yes thank you thank you thank you so much for having us and it's been a pleasure and really uh, again our two spirit youth we love you we appreciate you and you do have a community out there that supports you so katabatanamu thank you everyone peace